Jobs for Healthy People. It's an international collaboration of 48 different NGOs throughout the region. Um, all of these groups are really working to conserve the health of the Mesoamerican Reef. That's our goal, and we're using science-based um, stewardship and management to achieve that goal. And so what we've been doing is really working to collaborate with all the groups. We produce this report card every other year. It's a report on the health of the reef. So every two years, um, we team up with partners across the region in Mexico, Belize, Honduras, Guatemala, to go out and monitor the reef to see how healthy our, our reef is. Coral cover, so that's the amount of living coral that covers the bottom. That's kind of countered by the live macroalgal cover. You don't want a lot of macroalgae, so those two kind of compete for space. And having too much of the fleshy macroalgae is a sign that the reef is in bad shape. Then we look to the um, fish for our other two indicators. One is looking at the main families of herbivores. So that's parrotfish and the doctorfish. And then we look at commercial species, the snappers and groupers. Uh, four indicators of reef health that we monitor over time. And we roll them together into an index. So it's kind of like the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It doesn't tell you everything about the reef you want to know, but it's a good pressure point. It gives us a sense of how the reef is faring over time. Over 60% of these reefs are in poor or critical condition, and only about 10% are in good or very good condition. Almost 200 reef sites are included in this study. Although there are good and poor sites scattered throughout the Mesoamerican Reef, more of the good sites are located in the Bay Islands of Honduras, where there's a very large marine protected area. In this graph, reef sites are represented by black dots, changes over time are shown by how far away from the central baseline each site has moved. We hope to see more sites moving up into the green zone of improving reef condition. In my opinion, the main impact affecting the region is uh, coastal development in the form of hotels and, and, and urbanization, but also agriculture in, different, in other countries like in Guatemala and Honduras. Uh, but also another another important impacts or uh, threats to the region are uh, fishing or exploitation of the resources and uh, obviously climate change, which is affecting the the capacity of corals to grow and form the, the reef. Well, the issue with lionfish is that they are an invasive species, so they have. They have come in very quickly. The first one was seen in 2008, and now they're, they're basically everywhere throughout the region. They don't have natural predators, although we have seen that um, some snappers and groupers are starting to eat them and sharks once they're speared. So the next question is, will they learn to eat them without a little human intervention by spearing them first? They're displacing some of the natural fish because they're doing so well, so they're taking over, just like any invasive. Um, we know that humans are some of the best predators, right? So if we will just go after this fish, we'll do a pretty good job of reducing its numbers. It's critical for people in this region. Natural resources is one of the biggest wealths that we have. Um, the reef system and the benefits that we've been able to receive from the reef um, is in the millions.